sounds almost ridiculous, doesn't it? A defense ministry says it will only start producing a new tank after it is fully passed testing, and that becomes a headline. In a perfect world, that would be so obvious it wouldn't even deserve a press release, but procurement is not a perfect world. It's a world where on time can quietly become more important than works, where calendar milestones can start driving engineering decisions, and where the most dangerous phrase in an acquisition program is, we'll fix it later. That is why the UK Ministry of Defence telling Parliament via reporting picked up by the UK Defence Journal that Challenger 3 production will not begin to the schedule, but only after the vehicles complete full trials, is more than a procedural note. It is a signal about priorities. The Ministry is effectively saying, we are not going to lock ourselves into a hard production date that pressures teams to accept unfinished performance, overlook defects, or push an unproven configuration into serial manufacture. And they go further. Those tests won't be finished until the vehicle's capability is proven. That wording matters because it frames trials not as a bureaucratic checkbox, but as a gate you cannot talk your way through. Now ask yourself, why does this need to be said out loud? Because the incentive structure inside major defense projects routinely rewards the opposite behavior. If a program is late, it is politically embarrassing. If production lines are idle, industrial stakeholders start lobbying. If budgets are threatened, offices scramble to show momentum. So you get a very modern pattern. Start building before the design is stable, accept concurrency as a normal mode of work, then spend years and billions retrofitting fixes across vehicles that were delivered early but weren't truly ready. The short-term narrative looks good. Rollouts, handovers, initial operating capability, but the long-term bill arrives with interest. And when that bill arrives, it doesn't just hit the balance sheet, it hits readiness. Because fielding equipment that isn't fully mature creates a trap. Once a fleet exists, it becomes politically harder to admit it has fundamental flaws, financially harder to rebuild it properly, and operationally harder to keep it usable while you try to repair it. You can end up with vehicles that are technically in service, but practically unavailable, or available only under restrictions, or reliable only in ideal conditions. The Ministry's public posture on Challenger 3 reads like an attempt to step away from that trap before it forms. The article you shared makes the point bluntly, in peacetime, tests before mass production should be routine. But look at the record across Western programs and you see why the Ministry is trying to anchor expectations now. Projects slip for years for reasons that sound mundane. Supply chain issues, integration headaches, software delays, shifting requirements, certification changes, but the cumulative effect is brutal. Under that pressure, programs sometimes do the wrong thing for understandable reasons. They start producing an unfinished product to avoid visible delay, or they proceed while ignoring problems revealed in testing because stopping the line feels worse than accepting risk. The danger is that those problems don't disappear, they simply change form. From test range defects, you can still correct cheaply into fleet-wide weaknesses you have to manage in real units. Spain's Dragon Armored Vehicle is raised in your news as a cautionary example, and it fits the pattern. If you push something into production while key issues are unresolved, you may still meet a schedule milestone, but you've just shifted the risk forward into operational time, where fixes are slower, more expensive, and politically harder. And the UK does not have to look abroad for lessons. It has its own very recent, very painful reference point, Ajax, a program that reached an early readiness milestone, only to face restrictions soon after because of injuries to personnel, forcing the UK into a situation where salvaging the project can start to look less rational than buying something else entirely. That is what we'll fix it later can turn into, a choice between throwing good money after bad and writing off years of effort. So when the ministry avoids stating a firm production start date for Challenger 3, it's not just risk management, it's also expectation management. They are implicitly telling everyone, parliament, industry, the public and the army, that the by the end of the 2020s timeline is an aim point, not a contract with reality, and that vagueness is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it reduces the pressure to pretend progress is faster than it is. It lowers the temptation to declare a tank ready enough just to satisfy a calendar. On the other hand, it can also be used as a fog bank. If nothing is fixed, nothing is late. If the end date is elastic, delays become normal, and programs can drift without the kind of accountability that forces hard decisions. That is where Challenger 3's specific context becomes important, because this is not a clean sheet tank program starting with fresh hulls off a modern line. Your news notes another key issue. Worn, aging hulls are expected to be reused, and that alone can turn testing into a minefield of unpleasant surprises. A legacy platform carries legacy fatigue. Metal that has lived a hard life does not behave like metal fresh from the factory. Even if the design upgrade is excellent on paper, the real vehicle is a system and the hull is the system's foundation. 
If that foundation varies because some hulls are in better condition than others, then every standard fix becomes harder. You are no longer just qualifying a design, you are qualifying a process for assessing, refurbishing, and validating individual vehicles that may have very different histories. And that is exactly the kind of hidden complexity that creates schedule pressure because it doesn't always show up until you start cutting, measuring, and discovering what you actually have. Now put yourself in the ministry's position and ask the uncomfortable question, what is the greater risk, waiting or rushing? Waiting risks a capability gap, especially at a time when armor is being re-evaluated under the harsh light of modern warfare. Rushing risks fielding a tank that looks modern but carries reliability issues, integration problems, or reduced readiness rates, which means you have tanks that you can't count on when you need them. If Challenger 3 is supposed to be credible through the 2030S, then getting the fundamentals wrong now is not a small mistake. It's a strategic, self-inflicted wound. This is why the phrase, trials won't be finished until capability is proven, matters so much. It defines the end state in operational terms, not administrative terms. It implies that success isn't measured by completing a calendar of test events, but by demonstrating that the tank performs as intended consistently with the expected reliability and without defects that will ambush crews later. That is exactly the lesson Ajax painfully teaches. You can reach an initial milestone and still discover you are not actually ready for routine use. Challenger 3, if handled correctly, is the opportunity to show that the UK has learned from that experience rather than repeating it in a different shape. But let's not romanticize it. This approach also announces that Challenger 3 is likely to be a long build, a serious long-term construction project, as your source puts it, with real risks attached, especially if hull quality issues force rework, redesign, or tighter acceptance criteria that shrink the pool of usable vehicles. Testing first is the responsible choice, but it is not a magic wand. It does not eliminate delays. It simply makes those delays honest, and it makes the trade-offs explicit. You either pay in time now, or you pay in readiness later. So the real takeaway is not the UK will test its tank. The real takeaway is that the ministry is trying to resist a familiar failure mode, schedule-driven fielding that creates a fleet you spend the next decade apologizing for. The Challenger 3 story is, in a way, a story about discipline, engineering discipline, bureaucratic discipline, and political discipline. Can the system tolerate slow methodical proof, even when everyone wants a delivery date they can put in a speech? Can it hold the line when trials reveal problems that are expensive and embarrassing to fix? Because if it can, then boring procurement becomes a strategic advantage. And if it can't, then the most expensive tanks are not the ones you buy late, they are the ones you buy early and then have to rebuild in public.